Let's take a closer look at how these particles decay. In fact, let's look at one atom of uranium. Here it is. This is my one atom of uranium right here. And I ask it, hello, uranium. When will you decay? And the uranium's like, I got no clue. I got no idea when I'm going to decay. It's going to happen sooner or later. So what I'm trying to say by that silly story is that any individual uh, radioactive element is it, w w predicting whether or not it'll decay at some point is impossible. You can't. Um, it's basically like, you know, picking numbers in the state lottery, as the slide says. Um, the only thing that you know is the overall rate at which the whole sample will decay. But you don't know when any individual nuclei will decay. You just know that the sample itself will decay at a certain rate. And we know one specific very important value that is called the half-life, which is T one half, right? So this half-life is the amount of time that it takes to go from the original N0 number of parent nuclei to half that. Okay, so after one half-life of time for any given sample, right, you'll go from your original number of nuclei to half that. Um, and after two half-lifes, you'll go to half that. So N0, half of N0 over 2 is N0 over 4, right? And after three half-lifes, you'll go to N0 over 8, half of that, okay? So you can keep on doing this and doing this and doing this and doing this on and on, again and again and again and again. And really, you get this curve, as you can see from, you know, the drawing. You get this curve. And so you never know when you're going to be completely out of it. Technically, that would take uh, an infinite number of years because this line is asymptotic. Okay, it's getting closer and closer to zero because it's half closer, half closer. This is something called Zeno's paradox. Maybe you've heard of it. Not super important, but the important thing to know is that after, you know, uh, if this is n here, the number of parent nuclei, after the half life, you're left with n over two, right? And after two half lives, you're left with n over four, and on and on and on and on. That is all you can really say for sure, okay? So, now, the half-life of a substance depends on the substance, right? It's kind of related to how stable or unstable it is. And so, um, you could think from this point forward of the half-life as being a property of some radioactive substance. And you see there for, for various isotopes, um, the half-life is, you know, these values that are in this table. So Krypton, for example, has a half-life of just 3.16 minutes. Crazy, right? Um, whereas something like uranium has a half-life of 4.47 times 10 to the 9 years. That is a lot. It stays radioactive for a very, very long time, um, which is part of the reason why, you know, it, it is it's scary when we think of the, the nuclear byproducts of, you know, the, a potential disaster re regarding nuclear energy. Um, now, nuclear energy can be done very safely, um, but if it's not, then we have, you know, these substances that are in our water and streams that it's, it's not going to be a couple of days, right? That's 4.47 times 10 to the 90 years that um, at least half that stuff is going to um, be, still be here. So... Um, so you can see the range of possible half-lives is pretty huge. There's a huge spectrum there from minutes to days to years. Okay, let's do a misconception question. If the half-life of a radioactive sample is 10 years, then it should take how many years for the sample to decay completely? As you can see from this, that is kind of a stupid trick question, right? Because, you know, it, there's... There's no amount of years in which you can say that this swoop will eventually actually hit it because it's asymptotic and it'll just get closer and closer and closer. So the answer would be D. It cannot be determined. All right. All right. So that's just a little crash course in how radioactivity works and this concept of the half-life. In the next video, we're going to talk about activity 
which is actually the rate at which it decays. In other words, the number of parent molecules or parent nuclei per second that actually break down and how to calculate that and predict the future. All right, see you there.